Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. We begin with the inside story on Sana Derbis, the Lonely Hearts gold digger who netted millions of dollars from vulnerable older men. But the law has caught up with her, and so did we. Miss Derbis, this isn't your shop that you've hidden in. For the first time in a long time, I'm the only middle-aged man Sana Derbis isn't interested in. Miss Derbis, you got your bags packed? Perhaps because she's just packed. hours away from receiving a prison sentence. This woman is a nasty piece of work. And so too, her mates. You'd be pretty excited if you'd booked an online date with this femme fatale and hugely disappointed if this was the one who turned up. Yes, Derbis was an expert at that old online trap for lovelorn lonelies. Her fingers worked overtime pushing those Photoshop buttons on dating websites to transform her from this screaming mess to this. But the photographic fraud was nothing compared to the real fraud this ruthless gold digger was planning. I believe this particular matter deserved a custodial sentence. Today, she was jailed for defrauding more than $2 million from lonely men she met through dating websites. The 42-year-old mother of four met or chatted online to these men, telling them she loved them. I love you. Can't wait to be with you. I haven't eaten since yesterday. No matter what you think, I do love you. For some beautiful reason, I look forward to spending every day for the rest of my life with you. I just wish Mum had met you. She would ask these men to put $600 in her bank account for a hotel room. Once they put the money in, she would cancel the date, explaining her mother had died and she needed money from them for the funeral. Seeing my mum last night and feeling her cold body did something to me that I couldn't shake. Baby, please don't leave me. Mum's alive, by the way. She was there on the balcony yesterday. But if it wasn't mum, Derbis would also tell men she had to pay bogus medical bills for her sick children. Or worse still, that they too had died. In fact, she killed off her eldest daughter and son a couple of times. Charming. The money, there she is at the ATM, was usually loans. So in time, and still with no dates, the men asked her to pay it back. I don't have any more funds. I have $20 to my name. Derbis had bled them all dry. My pension here today can spare $100 for your tucker. Loving you as ever. Kisses. Sweetie, I've got none left. One victim gave $1.7 million, others tens of thousands. All of them acting on the promise of love and the sympathy of her so-called dead or dying children. More than $2 million and it went on for years. She built a new house with it, paid off the mortgage on the land, she bought cars, had some cosmetic surgery and spent ten to twelve thousand dollars a week on cocaine. After years of scamming lonely men, just eight were brave enough to report it to police and far too embarrassed to tell anyone else. Look, the victims will feel honestly gutted. Lawyer Sam Macedoni. It's so easy to do and it's something that should be stopped and jail is, I believe, the only punishment that's proper. So when police came knocking, they found Derbis, who was also on Centrelink benefits, had been a very busy fraudster. She had a gold diary with 103 men and their details in it. A pink diary had the names of 122 others and a red one contained the details of another 124 men all aged between 50 and 80. Police eventually seized and sold all her assets, although we found her still driving this snazzy car. I believe that the, the victims, as I said, showed strength and courage to come forward. The boss of the New South Wales Fraud Squad, Detective Superintendent Arthur Katsagianis, put it this way. The financial loss is far outweighed by the emotional distress caused in these particular circumstances. Unlike the flamboyant in your face online Sana Derbis, the real life one is quite shy. In fact, she's an artful dodger. This is, this is. Holed up in a pizza shop last night, she worked her phone again, calling more men. 
this time the burly kind, and a bevy of them turned up to greet me. Charming they were. Miss Derbis, why lock yourself up on your last day of freedom? Then she called some more, this time good men. But today the law was far more interested in her, giving Derbis three and a half years with an 18 month non-parole for all that dishonesty and deception. No doubt pleasing those deceived older men and clearly disappointing the younger ones that she actually did spend time with. The court says the assets that were sold will likely only recover about a third of what the victims lost.